Here we go. I smoke too much reefer. Oh, yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to 420 Live. I'm Jeff Kravitz. Welcome to Wednesday, the humpback edition of the show. You're probably wondering where I've been for the past three minutes, but I have literally been talking to myself thinking I was live. I, I, there has to be a limit to the bong hits before I go live. You know, I could maybe cap them off at two or three or instead of 10 or 12. And, you know, and then mixing in the coffee never helps. You know, I, on the way to work, I'm like, Starbucks? Yeah, Starbucks. So literally been sitting here looking and I got these warning signs flashing up, said, you're about to, to delete your own show. Par for the course, 420 Live. What are you expecting from an old stoner? Are you expecting highbrow entertainment that's on time and interesting? Possibly. Possibly. Today, we're going to get into it with our friends from Outside Lands, Rick Farman from Superfly Presents and Alan Scott coming up in just a minute. We're all getting ready. We could feel festival season coming. Vaccinate. It's vaccination season right now. Everybody's in the vaccination season. Everybody's strategizing how to get their vaccines, how to get it lined up how they're going to get their injections tomorrow in LA. It opens up to everybody 50 and older. And finally, they got to me on the list. I'm finally on the list. I'm coming up 50 and above. Okay. Yeah, I'm not 60 yet, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for my vaccine. I'm trying to pick which one I want. Like I'm trying to pick out outfits for a prom or something. Do I want the Johnson and Johnson? You know, and this is the conversation with the whole family. Uh, my wife got her second shot today. Congratulations, Julianne. And uh, my daughter Kiki is, I believe she's about to get her second shot. The kids are all rolling in. They all have different reasons for being able to get the shot and not me. <sighs> I should have gone for the obesity thing. But uh, I've lowered the BMI too much. As you know, we're all getting excited. There's a ton of stuff going on. We have so many things winding up. My phone's been ringing. The email's been clicking. I bing, bing, bing. My messaging. Everybody seems to be trying to strategize and figure out what, where we're going and what's happening. And there are things coming out right now. There are things starting to bubble up and pop up. I had a call with, I'm having calls with uh, clients. We're talking about stuff that's happening in the next couple of weeks, not stuff that's coming up later in the summer, but we have it going on. So I, I'm, uh, I'm ready. I'm well positioned. I'm well rested. The camera gear is a little bit janky after all those trips to the Virgin Islands, um, but I am definitely ready to uh, shoot again and get back at it. You know, I've had enough of a break. I, I, I understand retirement and now and what it feels like to be retired and have everything together. But, you know, I'm starting to feel life bubbling back up. This is a common conversation between me and all my friends. We're talking about what's going to be happening and strategizing how we can be together this summer. And we're all in agreement that it's going to be big, big fun. We see Europe locking down right now. What's happening in France? What's happening in Italy? The uh, France locked down this afternoon. Uh, in Washington State, 100 people that had COVID uh, in, uh, vaccines came down with uh, COVID after the fact. So obviously you need to have a a period of caution and still wear your mask and stuff like that. And uh, we're erring on the side of caution, but ready to rock. I mean, going to Tulum is definitely not erring on the side of caution. I was definitely flying wild and loose, it, but it was also nice to feel freedom again and feel what it's going to be like when this all comes back. So I'm excited. I'm excited for the festivals coming up today. We're going to be talking about outside lands, but if you saw Bonnaroo announced today, a very, very diverse lineup all over the place, you know, and the crazy thing about diverse lineups, I mean, there's probably, I want to see maybe 10% of the bands <laughs> that I care about. And of course I want to shoot all the spectacle, you know, my musical tastes run a little bit, you know, I'm not, I love Lizzo, but I'm, I'm just not banging that riding down the road. It's just not, you know, I love seeing her live and I love her vibe and I love her songs when I hear them and I like singing along in a club or whatever, but you know, I need a good 25 minute guitar solo. Anyway, today our, our guest, Rick Farman, Superfly Presents. Rick, you know, was there at the beginning of all of this, you know, kind of invented the uh, major 
uh, hippie festival back in the day. Bonnaroo is far from that. And, uh, and also was one of the uh, founders of Outside Lands, along with Alan Scott from Another Planet up there in San Francisco. And I'm happy to welcome both of them here to 420 Live. And if hopefully they're not as stoned as I was when I started the show. How was that first three minutes when I thought I was on the air? I really had some mojo going. You were, you were really flowing there, Jeff. Sorry, everybody missed it. Um, but it was actually, it was actually bumming me out. Was I was impressed at you. So oh it's better the God. second time. Yeah. God, you were just being really pessimistic. I didn't like it. Well, I mean, I like to be optimistic, but you know, today I read in the paper that they canceled the Byron Bay Blues Festival 24 hours before it was about to start because they had one case in North South Wales. Jesus. So I don't know if you saw, I saw that, but that was kind of like Australia. And I think there's two other cases in the whole country. So that, that's like 24 hours before your festival starts. Was this the paper you were reading? Is that what you just said? A paper? Yeah, yeah. You, you read in the paper. Was yeah, you know, I, you, you know, I'm an old man. I sit there and I actually read the paper <laughs> okay. while I'm on the toilet. So you're a day behind Australia. <laughs> that was yesterday's news. <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. Just checking. <laughs> well, so got, on, by the way, you were I was supposed to smoke copious amounts of weed before I came on here. Is that correct? Well, I obviously I think I covered enough for all of us. Okay, good. <laughs> Usually, uh, Jeff, what's the strain of the day? Uh, today was a little thin mints. You know, I'm up into the hybrids later in the uh, afternoon. But you know, it was the mix of the Starbucks that really fucked me because then all of a sudden it just gets your wiring all like, you know. The hippie crack starts setting in. <laughs> um, well, congratulations. You guys sold out in, what, three days? Yeah, a few days. I think we announced on Thursday and then sold out on Saturday. So, Well, beautiful. I mean, Outside Land is one of our favorite festivals. We, we've been selling out for a while. Um, this is nothing new. But uh, how are you feeling about Halloween weekend? I mean, I do love the fact that you guys, that people are going to wear masks and wear masks. It, it, yeah, you, <laughs> we're trying to make it easy for everybody <laughs> to accessorize with a mask, with a real mask, and then yeah. a, and then hopefully, hopefully, I'd like to think we're out of mask by then. But what do you? What's your gut telling you on this? I think we'll be close, but that's the beauty of the Halloween thing is that you know it's going to be part of the whole vibe anyway this year. I mean, I, I can't wait to see some of the costumes that are going to descend upon Golden Gate Park with this thing. I think it's going to be just as much of a spectacle as it, as the actual event in some ways. And, you know, obviously, Jeff, you know, I have a long uh, affinity for costuming back to all my New Orleans stuff and Mardi Gras. And, you know, I, I'm really excited about sort of some of the satirical costumes and, the you know, all the things that are going to sort of flow from the creativity that everybody's had bottled up over this time. So it's going to be really fun. Well, you know who's more excited than you, Rick? Carrie Black. Carrie Black. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he is excited. I don't even know what's going to happen, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be big. I, I would assume he's got six, no less than six costumes planned for the, for the week. <laughs> he always delivers. I just say that no matter where the bar is set, the guy always delivers. So what night of the week is Halloween? Is it Sunday? Sunday, night. Sunday closer. Sunday never, closer. Never and, uh, no. You know, the, the one thing I'm concerned about is, you know, the one problem I have with outside land is by the time I hit like 930, most of my substances are just kicking in and then I got to leave the park. So are you able to get a, a little curfew relief there from the city? <laughs> it's going to be we're going to, you know, maybe on 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 uh, on that Sunday, we'll push it a little bit. But we, we end early on Sunday anyway at 940. So there may be a little relief till 10. Actually, that's what you, we'll you, know, Jeff, you, you can start earlier. And yeah, I, I have to work all day. people here in the Bay Area. That's true. That's true. Uh, the, the other thing is Alan reminded me of this the other day on a call, which is super cool, is that it gets dark a lot earlier because of the whole daylight savings time. So we're going to have like you're normally at outside the hands. We only have a couple hours of darkness, even though we take the, you know, make the most of it with the light show and everything that we do. We're now going to have like what, three, four plus hours of dark. Yeah. So it's going to be oh, different. Oh, that oh, oh. One. So yeah, what he's saying is that it, rather than the last bands on every stage getting darkness, we're going to have the last two acts. 
So it's going to be a different uh, a different experience if you've been out to outside lands before. Yeah, and, and it could actually be warmer weather in October than August. We do have the Indian summer. So, yes, it is. Everyone thinks it's going to be colder, but you're, you have a better shot at uh, – at warmth. And we initially, when we were looking at outside lands way back in the day, I mean, we initially wanted to do it in October, September, October, but because of hardly strictly bluegrass, already, you know, planting their flag, you know, we had to go into the summer and, you know, that turned out to be great. But uh, we were initially eyeing the fall due to the weather in the Bay. And are, are they, are they work, is hardly strictly coming on this year or did I read that they canceled? Uh, I don't think there's any news either way on that, on what they're doing. And I don't, and I don't know what's happening there. Yeah. Well, it, it seems like uh, festivals are either punting, everybody's punting into the fall now. And uh, you got a lot of things that are happening around the same time. Uh, I was kind of blown away. I just looked at the amount of bands that are uh, what's, what's happening in on our world. And we're starting up uh, you know, in early April with Sewanee and all the way through you guys in October. And, uh, you know, even Bonnaroo, I saw that's uh, Electric Zoo that weekend, as well as uh, we got the Burning Man. We have possible fish shows at Dick's. I mean, there's going to be so many people moving into those weeks. Yeah, it's condensed, that's for sure. And uh, one of the reasons we wanted to get announced when we did was just to kind of beat all the noise that's coming yeah, because you knew everybody's going to jump in there. Um, what? So, what are your odds? I mean, you you guys think it's it's happening, regardless of what's what's happening. We're moving past what's what's going on. Obviously, you guys hitched your cart to the idea that we're going to be at a point where it's better. I mean, personally, honestly, I feel we are going to be at the point in October, late October, we're going to get together and possibly even sooner. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like that's the trajectory here. We obviously made this announcement with a lot of thought and consideration for all that. But, you know, look, the vaccine rollout is going pretty well. I mean, I think if you had asked us three or four months ago if we'd be at this level of vaccination and sort of the, you know, supply that's there being already ramped up in this way, would we be happy about that and feel optimistic? I, I think for sure. And so now that it's actually happening and you're seeing, you know, also the new administration kind of have their act together with it. I mean, I, I think we're in pretty good shape. Look, you never know in this world as that this year has shown us. But I think all things being sort of on the same you know trajectory we're on right now, I think we'll, we'll be really good. And that, that is why we moved it. Right. We've just figured more time, the better. So we we felt like there was a shot to do it in August. But why not? you know, move it, kind of make it special this year with the Halloween thing and just leave a little more time for everything to get worked out. Yeah. If we're, uh, and to echo your point, it's like to think that on April 15th, anyone in California that uh, wants a vaccine and is eligible for a vaccine, at least 16 and over, I, that's exceeding our my expectations. I'll say that. I mean, you know, we're talking like June before and now here we are April 15th for California. And I think you're seeing that also around the country. You know, there's a lot of that being echoed um, in the different states. But, uh, you know, there's the wild cards with the variants and uh, what's going to happen. But all of the news that's been coming out of uh, for the last month or so has just been been good news after good news. So let's hope that that keeps up and uh, we're all together in the park. And uh, and what when what Rick said, we just want to give ourselves the most time possible to have the most normal festival possible so that's normal, normal halloween festival in san francisco um <laughs> yeah. san francisco is crazy around halloween anyway so it's is, holiday in san francisco is halloween so it's gonna be great and you know i don't mind at 10 o'clock uh, over because that means we got plenty of time to party at night and set up the, the after shows um so people are talking about the vaccination vaccination passports now that's something you've seen biden talking about and that's a a, a current theme that we're seeing everywhere i mean is there talk about uh, you know, what people are going to, are you going to, what, what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're, we're going to follow what the standard is and we're going to wait and see kind of how that evolves. I don't think we'll be the first to, to have to solve that. And so, you know, uh, look, we hope we want to make it as Alan said, as normal as possible, as easy as possible to access and all that kind of stuff. And we also are going to do things safely. Right. As we always do, it's always kind of, you know, takes paramount importance. And so, you know, we're, we're just going to take it as it comes at this point. 
Yeah, and you got a passport? I'm all about the passport. No, I don't. We, you know, there's a there's a lot of noise about that, but we've been hearing about that in the industry since late last year when Ticketmaster, you know, uh, mentioned something about them looking at it. And you know, there's companies out there like Clear that are getting that have been having lots of conversations with the industry, but we'll see. So much can change from now until October. You know, look, think about you know six months ago was September, October last fall. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, things are happening in light years right now. So um, we'll just be ready when, uh, when the time comes and, you know, do best practices and follow, follow standards. And as Rick said, no, you know, we're not going to be the first baseballs has opening day come up there, you know, and the giants will be at 33% capacity. Whereas in Texas, there'll be a hundred percent capacity on opening day. So um, we, you can't compare much to Texas. Um, Ca- I like California to to when it's a hundred percent, though. I do like <laughs> yeah, that. it doesn't do your festival in Texas. Um, but California is twenty five percent indoors as of now, and if we stay and get into the orange, then we're going to be at fifty percent. There's uh, like the strokes are billed to play the forum uh, in the middle of May. I don't know how realistic that is. Do you have any indoor shows out in the in on the books? We have, the the we, we have them in the fall. We have indoor shows. Look, it's the tiers aren't going to be where our business can be running. We have to get out of the tiers, really, to, sh- to have our business up and running. And we need to be at, you know, 100 percent or close to close to full capacity to be able economically and operationally be run a uh, run our business. So, you know, it's when we get out of the tiers that we're really looking at. So was your cap on tickets the same as it was last year? Well, um, we're about 150%. We sell, we're trying to sell more. Yeah. Is that a good idea? So I guess that answers my next question, which is, I guess at this point, we're not thinking about social distancing and things of that nature. I mean, impossible, I think, to enforce some kind of social distancing at outside lands. Yeah, yeah. festival, you can't social distance, and that's a non-starter. And I think... You know, the government and everyone quickly realized uh, when you social distance, it doesn't matter what capacity you give, 25, 50, 100 percent. There's only so much space. You've got to social distance. There's only so many people you can fit into um, a venue or a restaurant. That's where they learned it from is the restaurants when they went up in the percentages and like, well, if you're telling us to social distance, this is all we can do is, you know, 20 percent. So. You know, we've laid out the polo fields for, you know, for fun to see how many people you could fit social distancing in the pods that you did in the UK. And, and? <laughs> it was only a few thousand people. It was how not, many? It was like a few thousand people when you wow. get everything in to, you know, six foot radius around each person. So or each group of four or six. I think the other thing is just, you know, being an outdoor event is a huge advantage. Um Obviously, you have certain crowd packs, but if people are if need to be masked and they're masked, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, um, I'm hoping we're way past this. I mean, it, se- it seems to be uh, right now. Bless you, Rick. It seems to me right now that uh, I can feel the, the the winds of change blowing. And I mean, you see the press throwing up these variants and all these roadblocks and the lady crying the other day about how, you know, we need to dig in. But I, you know, I, I feel it. You see it out on the streets. You can see people in the restaurants now. You see people indoors in L.A. eating, which we haven't seen. I, I'm sure same thing for you, Rick and, and Alan up there. Alan, are you in the Bay Area? Yeah, I'm in the Bay. I went out and ate indoors last week. So uh, I'm in. But it isn't it strange. It well, it is definitely strange. You're you're you know you're 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 kind of paranoid. At least I am. You know, I'm not I'm not uh, a neurotic. Jew. I'm not Jewish, but I'm a neurotic Jew. So we we accept you, Alan, into right, the thanks. neurotic Jewness. I, I think yeah. somewhere if you do twenty three and me, I'm pretty sure there's some Ashkenazi. <laughs> well, I, knew, I knew that was a reason we got along so well, Rick. I knew that was a reason we got along. Well. Yeah, no no doubt about that. <laughs> Yeah, look, I I think the thing that everybody just needs to keep in mind, like right now, is like if you want to get back to the fun, let's just all be freaking smart right now. We're so close, right? I don't think we need to be silly about it, right? I I agree. What we've dealt with this society is very difficult, and sort of what's it, what's enough and what's too much, and you know how much sort of public health messaging do they need to be sort of you know 
messaging ahead of what the realities are to get people to comply in some capacity. It's a very difficult job, I think, that people in public health have uh, around this. And you're never going to get it 100 percent right with something that you don't have experience with, you know, a new virus. And so I, I just think at this point, you know, everybody like I'm excited to get back at it. I'm trying to you know, get my life back. Of course, everybody is. But I think we do. I hope people sort of just like do it as smart as they possibly can, because we're we're close. We really are. Yeah, I feel it. I feel close. I feel close to you guys. <laughs> you've, been, you've been all over the, the world, I think. Well, so I, 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 I did pretty good. good. You, you haven't been quite as cloistered as everybody. You're like, this guy's like in the islands every other month, I see. Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah. Tell, tell us about I, that. How do, we get on, how do we get on that trip? I, well, I, I don't want to say the massive psychedelic use frees your mind from the, the confines of uh, society, but yeah, I, 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 my, my third eye opened up wide when I was in St. John, and the same thing in down in Mexico. And it's just like, you know what? I thought this early on, you have to go wherever the virus isn't and just like get out of Dodge. So when the numbers started going up in California this summer, I left when the numbers started going up in the winter, I left. Fortunately, I have a good friend that has a nice dive shop down there in Cozumel. And I went diving for it. It's a leveler to get away because we have, our brains have had a pounding and our whole uh, sense of what is normal and right. Like, like BuzzFeed yesterday was calling people out for being in Santa Monica on the beach and out on the pier and outside. And look, they don't have masks on. And I'm like, we need to move past this as a society, this uh, COVID shaming, you know, even I'm sure you guys feel it too, because I was reading, you know, we all saw what happened with Coachella where they punted to the, to, you know, they, they were like, we're not even going to deal with the fall. They talked about it, but they never anna officially announced. And now they've moved and, you know, listen, let's face it. We all want to get back to it. We all want to get back to rocking, but you know, some people don't think it's worth all the aggravation they're going through. And I'm sure it wasn't easy for you guys either. I'm sure you got your balls busted quite a bit uh, planning it and also announcing it because people are trying to second guess you too and what you're doing. Well, I have to say it's, it's a little bit of the opposite in that, the city, I mean, we met with the mayor a few weeks ago before we made the announcement and talked it through, and and she was extremely supportive of having the festival this year. I mean, she had hoped we could do it in August. So, you know, there is a, there's a lot of drivers that are pushing. Well, uh, economically, we get it. The cities, of course, yeah. want this. We need it. The hotels, well, the restaurants, it's, everybody. But it's also a mental health thing, too. I mean, the way that people have been cooped up, and we're seeing that uh, in the past year. And, you know, one of the things I think we can all agree, probably everyone who's watching and then us on the call or on the stream, is that, you know, music is such an important part of our lives and live music. And that, you know, communal and social um, uh, experiences that you have at festivals and at a concert. And also the, you know, the concerts we grew up here with fish and dead and, and, uh, and whoever else, and we need it. it. We need it for our, our souls. We need it for our health, so to speak. So it's more than just an economic driver, uh, there, Jeff. This is a good, no, I, good, good, good vibes, baby. As a, as a guy who's all, all right, well, was about to crack 300 fish shows in 2020, I uh, know all about like traveling around to catch great music. And I know how important it is to me to, because, you know, music for me is my religion. I don't, I'm not really a religious guy when it comes to the old gods. I don't really follow the old gods. Right. <laughs> I'm not out there at the, the tree. Um, uh, I've kind of moved on and I don't, Put any stock in religion or God, and I put all my stock into music and the higher power that I feel when I connect with uh, other people and with the guys on stage and everything else. So, yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I say. So it's, uh, it, you know, I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago. I think this was the first, well, New Year's since I was in high school or whatever, first year of college. I haven't spent music, you know, seeing music on New Year's, and first year I've gone without being at a concert since I was eight years old. So. Um, it's, 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 it's been, it's been different and I, you, you know, we all need it. And so that was a big driver for us is getting out. I mean, we were hearing from, you know, the outside lands community and the Bay area community of concerts. They just wanted, they needed this. And I think you saw that when tickets blew out. I mean, there's the demand there and people really, uh, need this. So we're happy to oblige. <laughs> Rick. 
<laughs> no, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's, it's, we got to get back at it. We got to do it safely, but it's look, all of these things are important. And I, again, I just think if you look at the timeline right now, I mean, you know, it, it's pretty amazing how quickly we got a vaccine for this thing. I mean, it really is. I think it bodes well for humanity because there's going to be a lot more of this stuff in all likelihood with climate and other, you know, sort of issues creating the dynamic where, you know, disease can spread. And so I think the fact that we've been able to get a vaccine so quickly, get it deployed. I mean, like Alan was saying before, you know, April, I mean, we're talking about October here. So right. that's why we feel really good about this. And again, I think we just all need to have like that little bit more patience. Um, but we can get through this next phase here. I think that we're going to have the second half of this year is going to be amazing. And I, the energy is going to be off the chart, right? Like oh. just everybody getting back to each other, having these experiences. I do think it's going to be interesting. I think some people are going to have some, uh, I think it's going to be emotional, you know, and I think people are going to have like, um, you know, people have been not out very much at all. And like Jeff Kravitz, uh, you know, uh, are, are, it's going to be it's going to be like a really interesting, uh, you know, emotional adjustment for people to get back out, you know, into society and get into those interactions and, you know, do those in a in a healthy way. I, I think it's going to be all great. But I, I do think we're all going to need to kind of take care of each other and be mindful of each other and making this transition because, this is obviously nothing anybody's experienced. And so we all need to be really supportive as, as everybody kind of gets back into it. I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, 100% smooth for everybody emotionally in that regard. And so I, I look, I, I think that's going to be a cool part about our music community is everybody's going to rally and, you know, support each other and just be psyched that, you know, we've got through this thing. Yeah. Well, between um, Bonnaroo uh, and by the time we get the outside lands, we, there's so much music, Alan. You have Life is Beautiful. Congratulations yeah. again. Another sellout. How, yeah. uh, what's happening with Vegas and that vibe there? I know that city's anxious to get back at it. Yeah, no, they are. They're pushing. Everything goes over, I think, to the counties have the responsibility starting May 1 to make the decisions um, in Nevada. I, I used to say Nevada, but now that I've been doing shows there, it's 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 uh, Nevada. Um but uh, yeah, that was the same thing. I mean, we had so much demand on the on sale for that, that we literally could have done a second weekend. There were so many people clamoring and a lot of that people are coming from Southern California. So, and there, you know, with the rumors about Coachella and um, you know, just being one of the, the first festival to announce this year. I mean, the demand was, was through the roof, but they're going to have some major conventions this summer in July. I think there's one. So there's going to be some uh, some testing uh, of the waters before it gets to life is beautiful, and you know the casinos have been open. I mean, that's I don't know if Las Vegas is the litmus test for the rest of the country. Definitely but, not. Uh, Definitely. It's, 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 I don't want to really hear much from uh, what we're doing in Vegas, but uh, but uh, it's it's encouraging, like like everything we're seeing out there. And they, I heard game on in Vegas. I had some friends that went like last week and they're like, oh, yeah, Vegas is back. It's crazy there right now. Yeah. So, Did it ever go by? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen, we're, we are pent up, like you said, but I'm thinking when I, when, I, when I started going away in December and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to rage again. And, you know, my first night I, I was partying like I usually party on a four night run. I did not have those legs the next day that I usually have where I bounce back after six hours of sleep. I was like, whoa, holy crap, I'm not in shape. I need some training. So I think by the time everybody gets to October 31st, it's going to be well lubricated. We're all going to be at the top of our game. You know, we're going to be back strong. Those yeah. are wise, wise words, wise words. Yeah. From I think there's going to be an unfortunate amount of rookiness going on out there in the world. And you know, look, I think our service industry people have had it really rough, of course, as rough as anybody. And I think when you get back out to a restaurant, you get back out to a bar or concert, uh, I think everybody's going to be need to be super mindful of just treating those people really, really well, because I think they're going to be dealing with, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, New Year's Eve uh, on a regular day, <laughs> uh, you know. Right. Right. I feel it. I feel it coming. Uh, you know, David Foster offers his congratulations. Yeah, that's another thing between 
if if you if you do the math, and this is it's beautiful math, but you can roll out of Life is Beautiful into French Quarter Fest the next weekend, and then you have two weekends of Jazz Fest back to back. That you know, I don't think I'd have much of a brain left by the time I get into uh, Halloween weekend. Jeff, Jeff, this is what you do, man. <laughs> Yeah, but Rick, I've been out of training. I've been retired for the past year, you know? This is like the obstacle course you've been waiting for, buddy. I mean, th this is this is all set up perfectly for you. I, I wish you could tell me how to have the same life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're, you're, you've got the golden ticket. By the way, Rick, did you know that by agreeing to do 420 Live, Jeff waived his fees for outside land? <laughs> <laughs> This that's is uh, that's, a, that's the best one I heard today. Trade. This is called trade. Thanks, trade Jeff. Deal. We wanted to both say thank you in person. Well, you know, you know, actually, you know what? <laughs> for, for coming on 420 Live, I have a new sponsor, Manscaper. You guys oh. got to get Manscaped. This little thing, Jeff Manscapes. Well, you know what, Rick? I had a triple hernia operation to uh, ten days ago. Triple. Triple, not I don't do anything one, and I didn't no. even know there was a triple till the guy told me there was a triple, and I was like, There's a triple, uh, and I'm still recovering, but the guy did a butcher job on the shave job, so I definitely have to <laughs> get a wow. triple. That's, we've, got, that's, we've digressed. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a pivot point to say hello to Dave Foster. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Speaking of Manscaped, I'm excited. Have you been to New Orleans since uh, COVID or no? You haven't been anywhere? No, but I, 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 it's one of the places that has been really in my heart during this time because I think of anywhere that's gotten impacted in New Orleans is, is you know, as, as much as anybody. And uh, man, what a, what a brutal thing to happen to a city that sort of relies so much on, you know, music and experiences and community right. gathering. I mean, it's, it's half the reason, I, a big portion of the reason uh, that I got into this is just, you know, grow, you know, going to school down there and, you know, being sort of infected with all the amazing, you know, attributes that that culture brings to the table. So uh, I've been thinking a lot about New Orleans during this time. Well, it's definitely in our heart. And uh, I, I'm kind of wanting to go down uh, first week in, of first week of May to be down there when it would normally be jazz fest. Uh, Newson was down there and he told me uh, there's a bands on every corner right now. The whole city's just full of music. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like oysters too. Um, <laughs> Rick, uh, you know, this is the first year kind of bittersweet. They announced the Bonnaroo lineup and you were like, I had nothing, I had no idea and I really didn't care and um, it's not really my table anymore. How does it feel to be, uh, to watch your baby uh, leave the house. All sweet, nothing better. It's really, it's kind of cool actually, to be honest, in a way to like be able to have something that you created like that and put so much into sort of, you know, go on its own. I probably a pretty good analogy is I'm sure when your kids go off to college, it's like kind of a sense of accomplishment, a sense of like, you know, Hey, that you're transitioning in your life and, you know, you have more time in your life to pursue other things and interests and you still, you still care about it. Right. Um, I've been joking. My uh, five-year goal for Bonnaroo personally is to pass out in the campgrounds. So I, I've well, never got, still hasn't happened. I've never, I've never, look, I, you know, Jeff at Bonnaroo, I've always been the guy that like kind of has to have it together in some capacity. You know, I, I get, I'm, I get I the call. That was good, I thought that was good stone. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. But the goodies, the goodies always good. So, okay, okay. Know, I mean, look, I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have Alan as a partner on Outside Lands because, you know, on Outside Lands, he, he carries that, you know, burden a little bit more than I do. And so, you know, but for Bonnaroo, it, you know, I've never really experienced Bonnaroo as sort of like a fan. The idea of going to Bonnaroo with no responsibility is such an amazing thought. Are you, are you like talking, rolling in the main gate and setting up in the GA campground and stuff like that? Well, that's not quite, quite that, but uh, you know, I'm still going to take advantage of my situation there, but, but honestly to just be able to go and watch music all day and like not have a bunch of, you know, responsibilities and meetings and this and that, like I literally just want to go and hang out. And I, th the idea of doing that is so foreign to me in a way that I, I was really bummed 
when it got canceled this year, like I, I was, I was like ready for that experience. So, you know, we were talking about it before we came on. I mean, the only problem for me is it's right on top of Burning Man. And, you know, I got three kids and a lot of responsibilities. So it's not like I can just do a Jeff Kravitz and go back to back there, you know? And so, well, I got three kids too. They're just a little bit older. Um, yeah. Well, you also have, a, you know, uh, your, your wife is an incredible human who somehow puts up with you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I keep, I keep her on the, on the chocolate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep her on so, the chocolate. So I, you know, I, uh, yeah, no, I, honestly, I, I'm, I'm just excited about it, man. I'm fired up to, to go down there and have a great time. Well, you guys had the option to go weekends in the fall. I mean, the same thing with, uh, you know, you, you were talking about, uh, outside lands as well as Bonnaroo. That was an option that you, you know, you owned part of the farm at a certain point. And, you know, what was the thought then about trying to do the two weekends? I know they tried exit one eleven uh, a little while ago. I think, um, when something's working, you know, it's hard to sort of change it. Um, and it worked for a really, really long time for us. Some of the years where it was a little more difficult, you know, we, we toyed with it. Some of the years where we had difficult weather, we toyed with it. Um, but I think the paramount thing was we liked being at the front end of the festival cycle. Um, you know, I just think that's where Bonnaroo sort of had its place and that, you know, just moving it was difficult. What I think will be interesting coming out of this is some of this reshuffling. Right. It'll be interesting to see if anything changes permanently. I'm sure some things will. They may leave Bonnaroo there and say, hey, we like the weather better or for other reasons. This just really works well. But I, I expect there to be some long term changes in that regard. Uh, and I think it took probably take something like this to get people to, you know, be have the, you know, the take the risk of doing something different. Well, you're outside the box. Are you, box you, are you saying you think it stays there? I mean, I know you don't have any say. I think it might. I don't know. I'm not involved, which is the beauty part of it. Yeah, no, 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 you're just I was, I was doing, Me and Steve Feener, you know, who's the head of all the production operations for all, everything we do in Outside Lands, we were we had a call uh, yesterday, the day before, where we had been hearing from some of our people that work on it about some of the things that they were having to deal with this year, and we were just like, oh my god, thank God, thank God, we don't have to deal with that. Yeah, you kind of got out at the opportune time there, Farman. By the way. You know, uh, every now and then it goes right for you. So uh, that, that, that one went right for us. But look, I, I think they're going to have a tremendous year. They're making a lot of changes to that thing. And it, it's it's awesome. It's going to be great. So, uh, let me, uh, Alan, uh, it's kind of the same question I'm asking. Do you think that if this year's experience at, at Outside Lands is so elevated by being in that weekend that it's the kind of thing that would stick? Or do, would you think about doing an Outside Lands in the spring and fall or – what do you where, think? Where, where, what, where, where we'll be back to? A little while. We will be back to August in 22. We're not going to stick on this weekend. There's a lot of things that need to be shuffled around in the park to accommodate us in October. And one is being so close to Hardly Strictly is just not ideal for the park itself and for the community around it. Um, as well as, you know, not to get into too many details, but cross high school cross country races and other things that are that occur there. So we're, we'll be back in August. This is a, a one and done. I never say never because Rick's probably his, his uh, mind is spinning right now. And he's going to be like, what if we do stay on Halloween? Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, August, this is a, one, a a special edition. We like to call it. And a uh, little tip of the hat to Vegas and uh, obviously new Orleans and, uh, at Halloween is huge in San Francisco. I was saying earlier, it is the biggest holiday in the city. It's not New Year's Eve and it's not, you know, uh, whatever, but it's uh, it's Halloween and people come out. So the energy should be uh, through the roof uh, for this event with everything that's going on. Yeah, I would think so. And, I, and you know, you're right, Rick. I mean, it's it's forced everybody to examine everything in their lives that they had scheduled and how important these things were that we've done. I mean, I've taken a look at the award shows here and I'm like, I don't care if I ever shoot another award show. They're so fucking boring to begin with. And it's just like as they cancel and the ratings drop and nobody gives a shit. I'm just like, yeah, I'm kind of moving past celebrity culture. I'm seeing like a, a big change in the wind on what people find important and what they're putting their time and energy to. And that's one thing that the past years forced us to do and examine these traditional things that were always at the same time and had a run. When you look at the Kentucky Derby of like 150 years or whatever it was, it's just just that was always on that weekend. And then it's all of a sudden the stuff just stops and everybody's like, oh, how important is it? What do we need to do this? And, and how much energy do we put into it? 
TV sports is so interesting though too because you are confined to your weekend when that every year everyone sticks away from that weekend and other sporting events, you know, from the Kentucky Derby or here's when you're going to have March Madness and here's when you're going to have the NFL kicking off, you know, so there's, there you're much more confined in that world. It feels like, but the, the award shows have been interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Grammys I thought were pretty cool how that was done at the beginning, kind of the Jules Holland feel. I don't know if you ever watched that show. Um, I think it's what, on TV. Unplugged or, uh, uh, Jules Holland, it's a TV show that does bands, and they just it's the same exact setup they started with the Grammys, where they're all in a room. There's three artists or four artists, and they rotate to the different, and they're all facing each other. So they're all seeing each other perform. So it's like Metallica could be there with Britney Howard and Harry Styles, you know, for lack of a better example. But and they're all they're all performing and uh, at diff, you know, they just rotate around the room. And that's how they did with the Grammys. That seemed to be the inspiration. So I thought that was kind of cool uh, result of uh, COVID. Well, I mean, yeah, they're definitely thinking outside the box, but, but you know, our attention span, especially the 18 to 24 year olds is as long as a freaking TikTok video. So it's not like you're able to drill into these kids that they should sit around and watch a three hour award show anymore. And I think that that's kind of what our entertainment's gone. Like network television itself is kind of abolished, you know? I mean, I don't. My twelve, my twelve year old daughter. She and she's on TikTok. She, uh, she and I watched the Grammys together. She really liked it. So she liked it. Yeah, it was all her fans. I mean, come up on. on them yet? Watch when you, when you yeah. see WAP live. When you see that those girls up there doing oh, that. God, that was not a fine moment in uh, in fatherdom. Was when <laughs> I sat there. Actually, I left the room for a little bit and I came down and that was on and my daughter's there and I'm just like, oh Jesus Christ! Did she ask for an explanation so, of, of what what it means? No, she was she she no. Her answer was like they don't they bleep out cursing and then they show this. That was her that was her answer to me and I said, yeah, you're right, you're right. It seems like a little bit of a a double standard, but uh, I what I'm saying is don't give up on the youth. My daughter, she, her friends pass around uh, Saturday Live skits that they see on YouTube. And just the other day, she was on her playlist. She had a bunch of Eminem songs. I was like, how do you know Eminem? Oh, Eminem's huge. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Farman, you had something to throw in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just like what Sam, what Sam's response was, sounds like something you would say. Um, yeah. All right. I, well, I wanted one more Bonnaroo question. They are doing sectioned off pod shows at the farm, and more importantly, doing single acts, which I always thought was a great idea because the venue's so amazing. It's already set up for you have plenty of room for parking and camping and everything else. How come that's not nothing? That was that something? I'm sure you guys have thought about that at some point. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the sort of advantages when you have a company that like Live Nation that has the resources that they do that owns something like that. Like for us, the numbers never made sense. And the risk- Well, they're not, not going to make sense there with people in pods either if you're telling me it's only going to be a couple thousand. Yeah, precisely. So they have the resources to do it for probably lots of reasons that make sense for them. It didn't really ever make sense for us to do something like that as an independent. Um, Rick, Rick is trying to justify selling it out to the man. That's what he's saying. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, feel, feel, feel good about that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to sell. If anybody wants to buy, I'm, I'm available. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, ser seriously, I, I think it, it is one of those things. You know, I saw today also that they're putting some kind of tram in. I mean, oh, that, looks cool. that looks cool. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to do that for years. Like that was something we talked a lot about. Um, and we could never figure it out. And I think when, you know, again, you're in a situation where, you know, you, you've got the kind of economics that they do at large, then they can make shit like that happen. So have the tramps, cool. the tram system running all the way from the parking lots in the center room. I saw, I was looking at that map today and I was like, Oh, look, they're putting public transportation in Bonnaroo. It, it's cool. It's awesome. I, it's, I'll hop on it. It's it's exciting. I mean, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, I've never walked through those campgrounds. You know, I've always had a golf cart and I never stayed right. out there. And I don't, can't imagine going in through GA and being out there with everybody else and really doing it like these people. They have to be such dedicated music fans. That walk is probably 45 minutes that we're talking about, right? To get from the farthest points of Bonnaroo in the center room. That's what's, well, so, but by the way, that's so what's so great about Bonnaroo and probably it's, you know, my favorite festival or had been, I've been in years, but 
you are dedicated, everyone out there, I don't care if you stay where you stay, Jeff, it's, you're still dedicated out there. It's like being in a padded room for four days. You know, you just, just go crazy and people, you know, they're camping, they're getting grimy. And these are the energy at that festival is really, you know, the best in the United States, as far as I can it, know. It, environment so much matters and the audience so much matters. It's, it's why that is what it is. People, the energy that the bands put into the shows comes directly from the energy coming off of the crowd that's going through that. And same thing with outside lands. I mean, it's like that park is just so amazing and magical and so many historical things have happened there. And, you know, when you get the opportunity to pop on that stage as an artist, you're like, okay, it's, it's time to bring it. And I, I think that's what makes some of these events really special when they get into these, you know, environments like that. It, it's it's really a two-way thing. Yeah. Building the fan experience and taking it to the next level. Um, you know, you guys have been at it for quite a long time. Rick, what what direction? Uh, I know you both your companies have gone in different directions recently. Alan, another planet uh, management that yep. was launched last month, I believe. We, it's been launched and we merged uh, or we brought aboard another manager, Lawrence Friedman, who has Billy Idol and Mike Campbell and some great up and coming acts like Cherry Glazer and, and Mia Follick. But uh, we've been around for a minute, but uh, we're making some moves right now to, to uh, expand. Yeah, I love it. I love Lawrence too. He's a great guy. Yeah. One of my one of my favorite people on the planet. And <laughs> and Farman, where is Superfly headed now? I mean, you're not. I don't see you guys uh, starting more festivals. But am I wrong? We 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 likely will. Uh, maybe not straight up music festivals, but but things in other genres and other areas. Um, you know, we've been really successful with this uh, location based experience stuff that we've been creating. We just launched uh, again this Friends experience, you know, based on the TV show. A lot of that came out of Cluster Fest, our festival, uh, comedy festival, where we activated a bunch of different, you know, movie and TV brands around that. And people loved it. And so we decided to make that a business unto itself. What's been pretty cool about that is that it's run for a good portion of this year. Uh, we had to shut down a few times here and there, but for the most part, we've been able to keep that operating because it's a controlled experience that you can manage in a COVID safe way. Um, and then, you know, I've been getting involved actually for a number of years in a lot of virtual event stuff. And so when COVID hit and there was a lot of opportunities around virtual events, um, it was, we were ready for it. Our agency has been doing a lot of work in that space. And I've been developing some new things that are about to come out, partnered with some people to develop some new technology along those lines. I, I'm actually a believer that um, everything that's happened with COVID and sort of experiences that are sort of decentralized in that regard um, is here to stay. It's not going to supplant live experience. Everybody's going to going to be in person. But I think what we've all recognized, even this show, right, is that like we can all hang out and have a pretty interesting experience not being in the same physical location. And so I think that there will be a lot of really high value experiences for people that, you know, kind of pick up on that. I think they've got to be really social. They've got to be kind of interactive. Um, they got to take a lot of the cues from Game World, um, which has had this kind of socialization for, you know, a long time now where people, you know, commune and meet and experience something, you know, from different locations and play the same game together, have conversation with one another during those experiences. So I'm, I'm pretty bullish, actually, that um, a lot of that behavior will enhance some of the live experience stuff. Uh, we'll make more money for creators and artists. And, you know, there's a ton of potential in long term. Yeah, I'm totally down with the VR world. As you know, we've talked about it before. And we were growing the BRC VR universe. The uh, Black Rock creative people I work with are diving into a bunch of different projects. And I agree, the socialization, everything that's happened over this pandemic isn't going away. It's just another way to put people in touch. And let's face it, you put 50 or 60,000 people in the park. You're leaving a half million out there that care about your brand that want to be able to experience it on another level. And in that VR realm is where we can bring people and be able to have a communal experience while watching a show, which I find in, in incredibly intriguing. And I really feel that that's the wave of the future, you know, and gaming too, like just going in there and playing games with your friends and the gamification of the VR world. It's uh, it's definitely the way we're we're heading. 
So yeah, with our inside lands that we did this year, the numbers were pretty amazing. And the amount of interest that we had from people all over the country and, and even internationally was way different than we could ever experience at the actual physical event. So it's, it's a pretty interesting opportunity for brands like, you know, outside lands to, to, you know, engage with other people. And I think we're, we're just going to see a lot of cool stuff along those lines. Well, you did bring up the uh, other festival you guys do together, Clusterfest. Uh, Alan, what's the status of Clusterfest? Well, I think Rick can do, I, I hate to do this. I have got to. <laughs> you got to go? I got it. Well, I have a, a son and he's picked, being picked up. Go, I didn't go know what the, uh, the uh, responsibilities, Jeff. You All right, well, well, answer my question. I'll let you go. I'll, I'll take it. Rick, we'll got it. For Alan, I'll see, I'll see I you love later. you. Say hi okay, to the kids. Love you guys. All right. Talk to you later. There you go. Um, right. we're, we're still figuring it out. We have, we're, we're, we're not going to do it in 21. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the future of it is. See what happens. I mean, the, the comedy is a lot harder. Is it a lot harder sell than music? Did you find? I mean, what do you think? It, you know, if you think about the, the scale of the audience, certainly. Right now, a lot of people watch comedy on TV and like these brands, these things that we're doing where we're taking things like friends and other brands and creating experiences around them. We think that's probably more of the where the potential is in the future of it. Um, you know, if you look at the comparison to how many people go see live comedy on a regular basis, stand up and that kind of stuff, and how many people go and see music on a regular basis, you know, very different market sizes. And so what we built with Clusterfest was good and it was a really nice experience. Um, and we'll just have to see whether that melds with some of the stuff we've been developing and creating now and whether there's an offering there that, you know, we feel is, is worth everybody's time. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it, interesting. HBO had their U.S. comedy out, uh, arts festival that they did in Aspen for a dozen years. And it was an amazing experience because it was a place for talent to come and grow it was like incubation. They were bringing in all this young town. You're bringing in your old classics and you're mixing them all together in a format that's uh, not as trying to put 15,000 people in a room or, or on, on, a, on a space to try to get comedy. And I think maybe on a more intimate level, it might be a good incubation and uh, a way to still be able to foster that kind of town because there really isn't those kind of things out, out there for comedians yeah. now other than like open mic nights. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Farming. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Is there anything out there you want to tell our folks before I cut you loose? No, man. Just much love to everybody. Much love to you, Jeff. And I uh, can't wait till we're back at it. Yeah, keep it, keep it up. Keep planning these events, and I'm going to keep shooting them. All right, brother. All right, take care. Thanks. Rick Farm and Superfly presents Alan Scott, Another Planet Entertainment. Thank you guys for coming on today and talking to us about the future of our festival world. Where are we going? Where are you guys going? I'm going everything. I'm going. I'm, my dance card is going to be punch, punch, punch. But we have over 30 festivals probably coming into September, and probably another 30 in October. You know, it's uh, the East Coast gets a little bit hairy there in October as far as the weather goes. But the West Coast will be rocking out. We'll be ready to go. Uh, you know, that's our prime time out here. So we will uh, hopefully. How's the things going on? It's kind of frustrating to see the things growing on the East Coast. Everybody going out to these festivals down in Florida, up in Connecticut, all over at these drive-ins, all over the place, Atlanta. And here we are and just dying for some something, anything. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Uh, oh, this is pretty good. Laz, Rick's been manscaping since Bunk 12. Oh, that's very, very, very fitting there, Laz. <laughs> And wrong time for oysters. I'm sorry. There's no wrong time for oysters. I don't believe that stuff about the um, the thing. Oh, Lisa, my full. I, interesting you bring that up because, you know, one of the things that I had up here to share with us was, let me see, was this screen here. Let me see where it is. It is a 2021 USA Music Festival lineups right now. All right. So uh, we could go through these here. We got a couple minutes. Ooby Dooby. I mean, that's a great name for a festival in Enos, Texas, April 24th to 25th. Sewanee Rising, you know, this lineup, actually, I like all these bands. There's nothing here I don't want to see. I mean, I don't know anybody below uh, maybe Devin, you know, Big Something, I know. Andy Frasco, Eric Krasno, Goose, love the goose, love the lettuce, love the umphs. You know, that's my hippie true self right there in that lineup. Uh, three points in the secret project. Mm, yeah, no, that's not going to be me. That's uh, 
Miami. I do love Miami. End of the month in Miami, April 30th. Sewanee again, ping, ping pong playing pigeons. <laughs> Galactic, Galactic opening up for the Pigeons. Carl Denson and open up for Twiddle. Come on, that can't be right. That that George Porter opening up for Carl. All right, you know we're in the upside down now, folks. Rolling loud. Oh Miami, there's your Travis Scott post Malone ASAP Rocky will not be at that. The Dirty Bird in Orlando, two live crew. Uh, no, won't be at that one. Seismic Dance Event 2021, Austin, no. Texas is not on my list of approved states. Skyline Festival, May 28th, Orlando, no. <laughs> Blue Ox, ah, Jason Isbell, 400, Shaky Graves, Sam Bush. It's actually a great lineup. Where is this? Wis oh, Wisconsin, Eau Claire, when? August uh, 19th to 21st, nope. That'll be some Jersey short time. Hi, Sierra. Oh, Dave Margulies, our good friend Dave, you know? I don't know. July 4th, Joe Russo's almost dead. Love the Joe Russo. Ziggy Marley, Disco Biscuits, Dr. Dog. See, this is kind of like the Bonnaroo lineup. When, when we first started the Bonnaroo, all the hippie bands out there would be one hippie band after another. And, you know, Farmer was talking about going to Bonnaroo and, like, passing out in the lot. But, you know, it's not the same thing. It's not like back in those hippie days when you really could do a Floyd Fest. I have a brother, Sturgill, Old Crow Medicine Show, Turquoise, Jerry Harris, and Adrian Blue. They're on the Bonnaroo lineup. I can't wait to see those guys. They're all uh, Jerry's been on the show. Turquoise guys have been on the show. Hinterland. Leon Bridges. Oh, this isn't a bad lineup. Day morning. I will not be going to Iowa. Summer camp. Oh, Ian Goldberg, our good friend Ian. Now, this lineup here. Talk about your old Bonnaroo lineup. Mo, Umphreys, Ween, Billy Strings. Billy's hot, huh? Three Six Mafia, Grizz. Hmm, it's actually a great lineup, but Chicago in August. I don't know. I kind of want to be at the Jersey Shore on the beach there. I'm hoping for fish beach shows still. I mean, I'm trying to will that to happen. North Coast Music Festival, our good friend Michael Berg. Uh, Michael's also involved with uh, Suwanee, Cascade, Grizz, Zed's Dead, Lewis Child. This is over the same weekend as Bonnaroo. Electric Zoo is the same weekend as Bonnaroo. I mean, that's the interesting thing. These things are all going to start overlapping, right? Electric Zoo 2021. This is the Supernaturals. That's at uh, Governor's Island, right? Or Randall's, Randall's Island. Elements Lakewood Fest and Lakewood PA. Mm -mm. All EDM. Uh, Dance, Dance Festopia, Kansas City. Will not be in Kansas, but life is beautiful. Las Vegas, hot lineup. I know who these triple X's are right here, and I can't tell you who it is, but... A little birdie told me a crazy lineup here. I know maybe 20 of the bands here. Noah Cyrus, Haim, ASAP Rocky, Glass Animals, great. Fisher, St. Vincent, Billy Eilish, Green Day, Tame and Paula. You know, that's a very diverse lineup. And, you know, those three good, very, very good headliners. Life is beautiful, sold out. That's on my list. Riot Fest, can't do it, right? Same weekend. 17th and 19th. Oh, and I think that's the same weekend as Danny's Festival in uh, in Asbury Park, the 17th and 19th. Imagine Festival also. Won't have to worry about that. Uh, taking Back Sunday. Really? Still together. And Ohana. Oh, Dana Point. Kings of Leon. Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder does this every year. Oh, Pearl Jam. When is that? September 26th? Yeah, I think I'll go down to Dana Point to see Pearl Jam. i really like to see Pearl Jam this year. Here's Metallica, Metallica, My Chemical Romance, and Limp Biscuit. Aftershock. That's our good friend, uh, Gary Spivak, doing Aftershock. Our friend John McHugh, that was the movie they made. Three points, 2021. And then there you go, Outside Lands. Exciting, hard summer. Well, that's the end of July. And Bonnaroo, Bonnaroo at the end there because I just tagged it on today. The lineup, Foo Fighters, Megan the Stallion, Lizzo, Tame Impala, Tired of Creator, Lena DeRay. Okay. Out of, the, out of those acts, Foo Fighters, Tame Impala, and Tired of Creator. I don't, I just don't. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't anymore. I just can't anymore. I removed the wrong thing. I just can't anymore with this. 
send this around. You want to see it? It was on, uh, what is it? USA Music Festivals. Musicfestivalwizard.com had that list. That's the list there. So you guys can figure out what you want to see. Yes. Yeah, you know. The, all right. Hold on. I'm going to put it. Uh, I'm going to cut it and paste it. Uh, you know, because I went on, you know, I'm doing my due diligence when I have guests and reading up on what's going on and what's what's going to happen to make sure that uh, we're in it to win it. And uh, there it is. I put it up there on the bottom. Everybody should have it. Janine, you should have that nice little web website now. And yeah, FOMO. What? Listen, we've been missing out now for a year. You should. Everybody should be over their FOMO and be into the joy of missing out. We don't have to be going to everything. Anyway, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Jeff Kravitz signing out. Peace, love, and happiness. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Susan Soros from um, the Cannabis Project. I was on her uh, on her Clubhouse show last week. She will be our guest. I look forward to talking to Susan. Everybody have a great night. Jeff Kravitz signing off.